We all know about the cost of living crisis. People are suffering, charities are pushed to the limits, families are stretched and the outlook, of course, is worrisome. We're looking at another rate rise, possibly. But all we're getting from politicians is the same platitudes and the same policies that will just make it worse. Listen to the Prime Minister today. Our government understands the cost of living is the number one pressure on Australian families, which is why help with the cost of living is our number one priority. Really? That's the same dross we heard on rotation in the election campaign a year and a half ago. Taking pressure off the cost of living. Of addressing cost of living issues, to take pressure off living standards. There is a cost of living crisis. Meaningful help with your cost of living. The cost of everything is going up. Well, the price of everything is still going up, only by more under Labor. Labor's done nothing to ease the inflation crisis. It continues to spend wildly, fuelling inflation. And its policies are, are pushing electricity prices up too, driving everything up with those increased power prices. But Anthony Albanese seems to be in denial. The Australian Energy Regulator has found the average wholesale electricity prices for the September quarter were less than half those seen at the same time last year. But if our opponents had succeeded in blocking energy bill relief, as they sought to do all the way along, then households would be paying hundreds of dollars more than they are today. So he's pretending that your power prices are going to go down. Hey, let us know when you get those reduced bills. And he talks there about how they're spending more money, more taxpayers' money, subsidising power prices for those who are hardest hit. Now, that might be wise and it might be necessary for now, but it's not the way to fix the problem. It's just throwing more taxpayers' money at a Band-Aid measure. The main game has to be making electricity cheaper for everyone. But instead, we heard from the Treasurer today how Labor, with its renewable zealotry, will only keep making matters worse. Our ability to become a superpower is reliant upon our ability to generate cheaper, cleaner, more reliable and increasingly renewable power. Now, we receive 10,000 times more solar radiation each year than we can use. Our offshore wind potential is estimated to exceed the capacity of the world's current coal-fired power stations. What arrant nonsense. We've got lots of sunshine and lots of wind, aren't we lucky? We've got lots of coal, gas and uranium too, but Labor doesn't want to use any of that. Instead, Labor wants to pump tens of billions of dollars extra into renewable energy projects. We need to get more projects off the ground faster. Now, after a wasted decade, we've made some really important progress. A $20 billion fund for transmission through re rewiring the nation with $16 billion of deals already done. Now, every dollar he mentions is a dollar that will have to be paid for with interest by consumers. Every dollar he mentions adds to power costs. It doesn't reduce them. You only have to look at what's happened to your power bill over the past years to know that. The ridiculous thing is that while it goes on about making us a renewable energy superpower, whatever that is, it sounds like a country that lacks energy security to me, but while it goes on about this nonsense, Labor also admits it's a lot harder than they thought. I really believe that the net zero transformation will be the defining piece of the defining decade. And whether we succeed or fail in these turbulent 20s will in large part be determined by how we maximise our advantages and leverage our strengths when it comes to energy in our economy. That's why it's such a major focus of our government. Good luck, eh? Labor is doubling down on the policies that have created the energy crisis. They've got communities opposing renewable projects right around the country, but they're promising more. Anyway, that's how much the Labor government cares about cost of living. It's happy to make electricity more expensive in order to satisfy United Nations emissions reductions goals that obviously can't do anything to improve the climate because global emissions continue to rise. As Tony Abbott said in London this week, net zero by 2050 is actually not going to happen. It's not possible. 
I've told you for years that even the International Energy Agency says it can't be done with current technology. Yet we get all this pretense. Our economy, our society, they were built on cheap, reliable power, yet we have a government deliberately undermining that foundation, giving us expensive and unreliable energy instead. It is madness, and it's high time the coalition stopped pussyfooting around like this. What we've said is we commit to net zero by 2050. Peter Dutton has made that clear. Now, you ask what we would do differently, we would do gas differently. So this government has demonised gas. Just pathetic. Forget net zero. It's a silly and unattainable goal. Promise to give us reliable power first and reduce emissions second over time by using gas with renewables and by introducing nuclear power. Yeah, a practical plan without virtue signalling that will actually bolster our standard of living. That's what the coalition needs to promise. They've got to give us a viable alternative.